Welcome to the Slob Sisters podcast, the show that explores the realistic art of modern homemaking, all of its challenges and all of the rewards. I'm Steph, a former slob, YouTuber and stay-at-home mom of three, and with me is my co-host and sister, Jill. Hello everyone, I'm Jill. Welcome to today's episode, which I think will be a very popular one. That's my opinion anyways. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just like... I feel like you're so much more excited for all the episodes than me. I'm just like dreading oversharing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's your thing. You're worried about what people are going to think of these and like the content, but I think it's awesome to be a little bit more open on the podcasting platform than maybe you can be on YouTube and things like that. Definitely. I do like that about the podcast. And we'll kind of go into that a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> for sure um, before we get to that though I really want to do our progress support I love doing this every week it gives me a second to reflect on something I've accomplished and kind of give myself a high five but first let's start with you what progress did you make this okay week? so this one is huge and I think you're I'm excited yeah you're gonna be <laughs> very excited and I'm not being sarcastic because sometimes I say something's huge and I've like you know taken my Christmas wreath down in like March. But... I was just thinking of your Christmas wreath because I think that's the last time you really talked something up. Yeah. No, this one's big. So um, a lot of people know who listen to the podcast. I've been working on my finances like crazy. I think I bring it up every week because it's a huge part of my life right now. Yeah, I can say officially that I am out of debt. What? Yes. Really? Yes. That fast? That fast. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. Okay. Do you want to share how much debt you had and what you paid off and how long it took you? Or? Sure. I mean, it wasn't a ton. I was in credit card debt for $6,000. Okay. Well, still. Yeah. I started budgeting um, in the beginning of June, very heavily budgeting. Like we don't have internet right now. <laughs> Yeah. And I started renting out my car. I have picked up a ton of overtime. I mean, I could go on about I'm not golfing this year. There's a lot of things we've cut out that probably aren't realistic in the long term. But I really wanted to get a head start on things and really just nip this in the bud and get that debt out. So yeah. it took me, you know, two and a half months. That's amazing. That's crazy. I'm, I'm shocked. Six thousand dollars. Yes, I'm shocked. <laughs> it's crazy. And you make like a, like a good income, but not nothing crazy. Like that's insane. I'm like blown away and so proud Thank of you. Thank you. So that's my progress. Huge. I like got Huge. my paycheck last week and I like put the last little bit there and I was like, so what do I do with the rest of this now? Does it just like <laughs> stay here? And I even asked my girlfriends, I was like, so what do you do when like you have money, like that you don't have anywhere to put it? Cause I haven't had that in a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> So now you need to work on the savings account portion of budgeting. Yeah, I've been looking into all of that kind of stuff. I might even talk to like Investing. an investor advisor. Ooh. So we'll see baby steps, right? So yeah. Anyways, what was your progress this week? Okay, so my progress is also huge. <laughs> and I think you're going to agree, maybe not life life wise, but for this podcast, it's huge is as you know, I hooked up a portable home phone in my house. That is huge for us because people don't realize how much editing goes into our podcast when I'm like, hello, Steph, are you there? Oh, because I have the worst, I have the worst cell phone service. I have the worst internet, like the worst. Think back to when you were like in high school, 1999 and waiting for the, <laughs> it's awful I'm dropping calls all the time so I did I got a home phone hooked up but then I had just like this wall phone so and it's just in the middle of the basement I don't want to like go record in my storage room so now I have a portable there phone, we go and I'm on my portable phone and the reception is clear and I'm thrilled and I know you're thrilled as well the internet is still garbage yes <laughs> Step two, I'm really running this whole YouTube empire. I mean, can we call it an empire? On the world's worst internet. It's extremely frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I doing with my life? I think that's one of your biggest complaints with the YouTube is it takes me like 10 hours to upload a video. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. <laughs> okay, so with that, do you want to introduce the topic? I would love to. Being that this was my idea, I mean, a lot of these podcasts are kind of these are all my ideas. ideas. Well, what? What can I say? I've got better ideas. So, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> it's all good. So, today's topic being a YouTuber the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the internet being the ugly part. So, the good, the bad, and the internet. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to act as an interviewer today. You are my interviewee. And I mean, 
I know you don't think this is a super exciting topic, but I think a lot of people would be really interested in knowing what goes on behind the scenes and what it's actually like being a YouTuber. So I'm going to get all the dirt today and you better be honest and you know I'll hold you to it. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, well, you know the answers. (laughs) Well, I know. When I was talking to our mom before I came here, we were out for dinner and I said, you know, I'm doing this podcast with Steph after. I was like, she better be honest. She's like, well, you just have to hold her to it and say if she's lying. I was like, okay, great. (laughs) Exactly. So let's jump right into it. Why don't you give everybody just like a very quick backstory on how you became a YouTuber? Because it's not the usual story, I don't think. It was kind of an accident, right? Sure. Yeah. And I think this happens as well. But the way that it happened for me was I was trying to get my house together and try and get organized and clean. And I was just a complete hot mess. Secret slob. You guys know that part. And I started watching people cleaning on YouTube, including How Jen Does It and Diana Denmark, Fly Lady, Fly Lady Cat, a bunch of people like that. And I thought, you know, I can do this too, that I can do this, keep my house clean, then I can make these videos. But I really always have a hard time feeling accountable to things. And I really wanted to stick with this. So I thought maybe I'll make videos and kind of video my progress and kind of do a little journal of it a video journal and so I started making these videos and to be totally honest I didn't even know anything about the world of YouTube I didn't think anybody was gonna watch it like our mom watched it and other than that I didn't really care I was just trying to make progress on my own self I don't really like writing but I really like making videos so I just kind of started a video journal and after about a year I was doing a lot better with my housework and people really started watching the channel and that's when I kind of became an actual YouTuber and learned that that's even a thing that you could be. Yeah, like I don't think you were like setting out to be an influencer and get like YouTube famous. I don't think I even watched a video of yours until like a year in. You like mentioned them all. You don't think, excuse me, may I clarify, you <laughs> you made fun of me for like a year. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I don't even think I watched a video. I ridiculed you for a year is what you should be saying. <laughs> <laughs> Who's holding who accountable here? Good point. First of all, making, making fun for a year and then being like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that is true. Um, I won't say that we all had your back. We were, you know, we were semi-supportive. <laughs> mom was really supportive super supportive hilariously she was never subscribed until like i don't know two years in i was like you're not even subscribed to my channel mom. oh yeah because she wanted to comment but she couldn't because <laughs> and then she was what was her youtube name heather steph's mom yeah now her youtube google name is heather steph's mom <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome she's proud of you that's good yeah okay so that covers that part so what would you say the best part of being a youtuber is Oh, yeah. So the best part of being a YouTuber, well, the best part for me is like finally having my act together somewhat in having my house clean and kind of parallel to that is finding other people in the same situation as me. Not because I'm like happy other people are in that situation, but it really is like nice to know I'm not the only one. I'm not alone. I'm not a freak. (laughs) And also I'm able to help other people who are feeling the same way that I was, right? It's called the secret slob because I was keeping that kind of part of me a secret. And like we talked about at the beginning, I don't really like to share a bunch I'm really outgoing and extroverted but I'm also super private Mm -hmm. I don't like to share my struggle I don't like anyone to see me be bad at things and this is probably the thing I was the absolute worst at so it was really nice to kind of find company in that and have a community of people that I can grow and share with. absolutely and I think with that you've given people a way to not only connect with you but with each other it's a common ground for people to come and say hey I'm also like this like I'm having trouble keeping myself together at home and you know keeping organized and it's you know so many times people come onto our Facebook group and onto your YouTube and they say oh my gosh I found my people yes exactly yeah for a lot of people it's so nice to know you're not the only one because I think in our society we're so worried about like making it look like we have it all together oh it's the worst yeah don't like saying I need help I'm falling apart Yeah. And I think also too, I would get some comments at the beginning that were like, you're disgusting. How could you be such a slob? What's wrong with your mother? How come she didn't teach you these things? And it was just always kind of funny to me. I didn't take them personally because I was like, they would be like, you're so dirty. I'm like, yeah, the channel's called the secret slob. I know that you're not like revealing any new big (laughs) news flashes to me, right? Like I'm aware I'm a hot mess, not to worry. But at the same time, when people say, isn't it just obvious? Well, no, it's not. It was never obvious to me. I've struggled with this my whole life and shocking 
but not shocking, there are people all over the world. You're not born with the ability to do almost any skill except for breathe and eat and sleep. Everything is learned. And if nobody taught you, how would you know? So why don't we go into kind of segue that into the next question, which is what's the worst part of being a YouTuber? And I know you kind of mentioned some of the comments at the beginning. Oh, yeah. You know. No, yeah. The you, the comments aren't bad. I mean, those are really the worst of it. I, okay, so I get, I get, you're such a slob, which it like literally rolls off my back. I'm like, duh. <laughs> and then I sometimes at the beginning would get ones like, your teeth are crooked. I was just going to say, like, remember how you had like three <laughs> comments in two weeks being like, you need braces? <laughs> yeah, you need braces. And I'm like, been there, done that. Obviously, they didn't work. Didn't wear my retainer. <laughs> so that's fine too. I don't, that's doesn't bother you get me. some you get some ones commenting on how you yell which I like because I'm a bit of a yeller as well and you always say that on our podcast yeah. that I'm constantly <laughs> yelling and I get that as feedback at work yeah. as well some of the times patients won't like write a comment like yeah. she didn't have to yell and I was like I was just excitedly talking <laughs> Yeah, right? No, I definitely, like, if I go back to some of my, pre like, older videos, I'm like, whoa, I really was yelling. <laughs> Hi, everyone! I'm <laughs> yeah. Steph! <laughs> exactly. No, I was, I was a bit yelly, and that's fine. But you know what? The comments are so minor and and because I keep a lot of my actual personal life off of it I don't get anything um comment wise that I can really take personally right like I don't care if you don't like my furniture I don't care if you think my teeth are crooked but I don't share anything that I would really care if you commented on so that's fine the comments are fine I don't get that many bad ones they're 99.9% .9 amazing and supportive and lovely. The worst part I would say though of being a YouTuber is I, I love making content. I love putting stuff out, but there is a bit of pressure to be that consistent kind of content creator. And as you know, I've had times where I'm like totally overwhelmed with my own life and I still kind of feel that pressure to keep going because I do feel like now I've reached a certain point where people are counting on me to put content out, even though Again, everyone's been so supportive. And like last year when I completely went off the radar for like two months. Without telling anyone. <laughs> without telling anyone. People were so nice about it. They're like, she probably just needs a break. It's all good. Like she just moved. And it was true. I just like needed a break. It was not an appropriate way to take a break. Like I could have just said, hey, I need a break. But that's probably the hardest part of it. So worst? No, just, just kind of hard sometimes, especially in these busier times in my life. Like I've gotten better though to just say, hey, I'm probably not going to be very consistent like this summer because we're building our new house and I live in my yard <laughs> and our internet's the worst. But just bear with me and it's fine. Like I think a lot of YouTubers get really obsessed with numbers and growing and algorithms and I've had to kind of leave that behind because I can't keep up and I'm not going to grow as fast and that's just fine because it's not really what I'm here to do. Well, and I think another thing in this, you know, I've kind of started experiencing as we've started the podcast and as I do some work for you is it's not like a job that you go to and come home. It's a job that you could always be doing more, right? Yeah. I mean, the more we do at this, you know, the more followers you'll get, the better, you know, performance you'll do. There's always more things to learn. You could do more videos, you could do more blogs. And yet, so it's kind of always hanging on you a little bit. Whereas like for my, you know, Monday to Friday job, I go to work, I come home, I know I've like done my day's work. Whereas yeah. this kind of side of thing, it's like, you know, have you made enough videos? Like, you know, how are we doing enough kind of thing? Sure. Yeah, the sky's definitely the limit. And then it just comes to a place where I, like I had to decide for myself and we're all, this is always changing for me, depending on where I'm at is what, what am I wanting out of this? And what am I getting out of this? Because it's so tempting to just get more, 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 but really what does it mean to have more followers? I'd rather have less followers who are really getting good quality content that they're really relating to rather than me just putting out anything I can think of. No. So I kind of, you know, I got big at the beginning, making videos randomly, not putting any tags or hashtags or descriptions or making fancy thumbnails. And I still, you know, hit the big time with YouTube. So I just figure that's fine. It's all about the content yeah. and having a good time, right? People know when you're not having fun. And I've had that comment this year a few times. People are like, you seem really drained. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Weird. <laughs> weird you can't hide it I guess <laughs> like I am drained yeah. and I love this and I love this platform and I I mean I'm just like loving the podcast I love doing my blog but yeah when everything else is kind of building up it definitely is something that has to take a back burner for me because it's not even our main source of income in our family yeah fair enough so on that note one of my questions was do you make money well yes I do mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It's really interesting to me, again, how much money there is to make in this space. I had no idea when I first had my channel monetized. I thought, oh, maybe I'd get 50 bucks or something. No, it's like a huge amount of money. And by monetized, you mean the ads kind of start playing in your... 
videos yeah. and you get a little bit of a kickback, but you need a certain amount of followers until you can get that. That's right. Yeah. So once you get a certain number of followers and a certain number of watch hours, which kind of happened for me overnight after a year of, you know, just kind four, of doing it on four my followers. own. <laughs> Four followers. No, I had like 200. <laughs> well, you weren't one of no, them. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no. And so then it started to kind of make money. So you get, do get a little kickback from Google from when they play those ads at the beginning of the videos or in the middle or at the end. Here's a fun fact. The YouTuber themselves are the ones who decide where the ads go and how many ads are in there. So, and I have seen some YouTubers say like, sorry about the ads. We're, they're not out of our control. And that's a lie. <laughs> Straight up they're lie. completely in your control. So that's why I like try not to put them in the middle of videos because I don't like those and I always try to put the skippable ads because if they're the non-skippable that's all a choice that YouTubers can make so I try to make it as like low impact ads as possible but I still put them in because it's definitely become a thing in my life where I do need to make a little bit of money back because it takes such an amount of time and I need to get daycare and you know you help me out and so I need to pay you and we have a video editor that we pay and Andrew who's listening to this is our audio editor for the podcast so we pay those people and that's kind of how we make our money yeah back. and even like to get gear and stuff it's nice to kind of have that all paid for and then yeah get paid for your time I don't think that that's unreasonable so definitely but you know like this is definitely a full-time living that I can absolutely make. <laughs> well I make as much as I used to make at my job absolutely I know it's uh frustrates me to the day so or it frustrates, <laughs> it frustrates you so, Why? well just because as I'm like working my overtime shifts doing this I'm like Steph just making videos and like yes you pay me and that's very nice yeah I mean I think we all would love to just work at home and film ourselves cleaning our house and make full time <laughs> wage, right? Like, let's be honest. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's been a, a pretty interesting experience. Yeah, and I'm proud of my I'm proud of myself, you know, because working for me was a big deal, and and making my own money and having my own things was a big deal. And so when I became a stay at home mom, that was one of the hardest things was realizing that everything I spent was, you know, it's our money, but my husband made it. And so I always just feel really good about making my own money. I love that I have a connection to the adult world and I can kind of feel independent and I don't know, it just kind of settles something in my soul. Mm -hmm. Well, if and if sense. we really want to get into, we've kind of looked at like the potential money we could be making with like the whole secret slot brand and like <laughs> everyone out there we are not doing as well as some of those people are doing just because <laughs> I mean there's no. so many things you can take advantage of in terms of affiliate marketing and sponsors and yeah. this and that all takes time and yeah exactly it depends what and it depends what you want to put in it's a struggle yeah and well and for us like we just decided like we have this many hours in a week and I'm not sacrificing time with my kids to do this so you know, I do a little bit and I get a little bit and I'm good with it. And just it. growing organically. Yeah, it feels it feels a lot better that way than pushing it and trying to like trick people into following me or buying things from me, things like that. So on um, the topic of, you know, putting hours in and making the money, how many hours a week do you put in? And I know for a fact that that really varies for you. Yeah, yeah. So in the school year, I had a babysitter who babysat, and I've been doing that for the last two years, eight hours a week. So for the first year, it was two half days a week. And then this year, it's been one full day. So eight good hours. And sometimes I go shopping in there. And then I would say another like two or three. So I would say about 12 a week. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's about right, hey? And But then weeks, weeks when we do a lot, it's a lot. But then I do have weeks where it's like two. Yeah, where it's literally just checking emails and making sure everything's kind of running accordingly. And yeah, but I should mention, right, like you helped me. So that's hours off my plate. And for a long time, we had a different assistant who helped and that took hours off my plate and, and having the editor and having Andrew, our sound editor, all those things take hours off my plate. Like I used to spend a lot of time editing videos, tons of time. And now not so much, although she just quit because she got an amazing job and congratulations to her. I'm happy for anybody who wants a job editing my videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send me an email. Yeah, no kidding. Because that, you know, that's all time that... You, I mean, your your main job is a stay at home mom. That's a yeah. full time job, and so every hour that you can kind of pass off to someone else and really get it done better. Sorry, Steph. Oh yeah, having she a was professional way editor is, you know, they're probably doing it a lot faster than you and better. So definitely, and I mean, there was like like you were talking about too the gear and the upgrading. Like when I first started, I filmed on my like two thousand five MacBook that I would rest on like a laundry basket. <laughs> And all of the videos were like flipped backwards because <laughs> it was just a webcam 
camera, right? And then I upgraded, started using my phone, upgraded, started using, you know, a proper blogging camera. And I have like the tripod and all the lights and stuff now. And so it just kind of, as it got bigger too, I think there's an expectation that your quality gets better. And that's why it's nice to use an editor and things like that. Absolutely. And I think it's funny because, you know, even when I come up to your house and I see you filming videos, we do things like this, like it doesn't seem, I don't know the word for it. Like it doesn't seem so professional. And yet these kind of professional products come out of it. And I wonder, are all YouTubers like this? Just kind of like, well, I got to film a video. So let's like, you know, get this stuff together. And I'm going to put my tripod on the counter and, you know, or is it more of a production? Because I mean, maybe that's what makes your YouTube channel so, you know, organic and real is that you're really just bringing people into your life and it's not a big production and a setup for you. Right. So I know for a fact that YouTuber burnout is a huge thing. Literally every YouTuber from like the biggest ones to the tiny little channels talk about burnout and that like what I was talking about having to be consistent, having to constantly create, feeling like you need to get something out. I've seen tons of videos of YouTubers that I love that are just a little bit kind of like you can tell last minute rushed not their best work (laughs) I've done them too so I think everybody feels the way I do I do think though you can get to a point if you get the right people involved where everything can work like a well-oiled machine right there are some who really have things filmed ahead of time and someone else is editing them and everything's lined up and ready to go I mean there's a reason we don't even do guests on our podcast because we record these at like 10 (laughs) p.m 5 a.m that's not a good time to ask us And usually we only arrange them like five minutes ahead of time, right? So we're still not at a place where it's like any kind of well-oiled machine. Although we're working on that. Just trying. I feel like this has been a conversation we've had for years. It's like, okay, let's get a system. Let's stick to it. And then like two weeks later, it's like, oh my gosh, we're so behind. (laughs) Yeah. My life. My life got in the way. I know you texted me the other day and you're like, do you have an email written for this week? Because we do have an email list that we send out somewhat irregularly. And I was like, no, I couldn't get it done. That was the answer. You're like, okay, thumbs up. (laughs) It's like, I couldn't do it. Okay, great. I was busy. My kids keep me busy all day. Yeah, and I mean, as people get bigger, I'm sure then they have someone who writes those emails for them and makes it all. But I mean, for now, like your team literally right now is me and you, and then you have a couple helpers that do very specific things. So it's not this huge team that I'm sure some people might think it is. Yeah, no, and people do have those huge teams, but I also take pride in the fact that it is still like homegrown and everything that you read, I've written and everything, all the videos, like I just make them up and and all the scripts for our podcast, because we do have a little kind of outline that we follow, you write them, you know, we do everything. And so it's not like... I'm just pumping out content for the sake of pumping it out. Anything you read that I put out is something that I felt like sharing. And and I really value that because I value that in other people. And you can tell when influencers and podcasters and YouTubers make that switch. Someone else is doing their content and you're like, it's just not the same. No, absolutely. So what do you think is the most surprising or interesting thing that has happened from all of this? The most, oh man. Maybe I'll quit and go be an interviewer. You Yeah, definitely. I think the most surprising thing is my sister becoming an amazing interviewer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, well, a huge one for me, and, and you know this, is the fact that you and I have now got this business that we run together from a thousand kilometers apart. We have this way to kind of have this creative outlet and you're almost just as involved as I am at this point. And I'm learning. And I'm, but no, you're You amazing. have a technical assistant who's Googling every single technical thing I have to do. <laughs> Right. But you also come up with a lot of really great ideas, like the 21 days to a clean home journal. That was your idea, right? And you even made up the outline and then I filled it all in and made it the way I wanted it to be, right? You often come up with a lot of our ideas and then I like take them and make them the way I well, want you're, them. Well, we've discussed this. You're a better presenter of ideas. I can like come up with things and like... <laughs> yeah, you've got this spark. I'm, I'm not good playing. at like Instagram <laughs> captions. I tried, failed. <laughs> Oh gosh, who's good at Instagram captions? I'm terrible. So the I think the surprising thing is that we've been able to build a business out of this and it just keeps growing and we keep being able to add different things and it's just so enjoyable. And I think secondly, the most surprising thing is it's just been really interesting to see how much interest there is in kind of my life and what I'm doing because I guess when I first started putting those videos out, I didn't know or care if anybody watched them and people got really interested and I think that's amazing. And 
And even better is like you said before, we've created this little community. So if you go into the Facebook group, I don't go in there that often. It's one of those things that I just like don't really have time to hit. And it's just a self-supporting community. Everybody kind of has, they have these little catchphrases in there and systems and people post their stuff and everybody's cheering everybody on. And we constantly get comments that it's like the nicest, most supportive place in the internet. And I think that's the most incredible thing that's happened of all this is we've kind of been able to back, and I'm not saying I don't have any part in that community, back this community that's just really incredible. Mm -hmm. And I think the Facebook group is a really interesting group to look at because we really created something that's community run. And I we, we have a ton of help from Mary. We love Mary. Shout out to Mary. Yeah, shout out to Mary and you. Yeah, I do a little bit, but honestly, Mary, really, she's awesome. Oh, I like, I will go to write Mary a message and be like, hey, I put out a new video and it's already been shared. Yeah, she's <laughs> on the ball. Um, And so, but it's interesting to see like as a community run group, how it hasn't really gone too negative. And sometimes she'll even like share a comment because I'll go through it. I go through it more than you, but you know, till she'll take a screenshot or like share a comment with me that's just like so inspiring. And I know I shared one yeah. with you last week of just someone saying like, you know, I couldn't get it together. I joined this group. I watched some videos and it just like, you know, one foot in front of the other. And yeah, I haven't done a ton, but like I've done more than I've done in years. Yeah. No. And that did, at the end of the day, that's, that's all I want for people because I know what it felt like to feel embarrassed and ashamed and to see not only Instagram, but people in my life talking about like, lazy this and slobby that and ew her house is disgusting and thinking like in the inside oh my goodness like don't come over yeah. and just knowing that that's okay and a huge I guess you know what's something that's been huge for me is from this I've been able to learn that being vulnerable and just being yourself and putting all your flaws out there isn't always such a bad thing yeah right? absolutely and you know what else, and you know what else is surprising <laughs> here's something funny you know what people say to me all the time oh I don't want you to come to my house because you're cleaning on YouTube and my house is always really dirty and I'm like I have to always remind people <laughs> in my life it's called the secret slob <laughs> like this isn't the secret clean freak not the take secret, it from like, me everyone she has not turned into a clean freak <laughs> No, this is the secret. I'm still struggling all the time. I'm sharing with you what's working for me, but this isn't like I'm not cured. <laughs> yeah. I know. I love it when my our dad goes up there and he's like, uh, don't you have a cleaning channel? Uh. <laughs> it's his favorite joke every time. <laughs> it's the secret. I'm doing my best <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right now, uh, but I'm doing better than I was. <laughs> well, exactly. And that's, and that's what matters. And I think that's what people see and they can see, you know, I know one thing that you've always said is you were sick of watching YouTube clean their already clean home and with you we are not watching a clean home get clean we're watching a dirty <laughs> home get a little bit cleaner so exactly and that's all really any of us can ask there for. we go well why don't we wrap this up i think that was awesome stuff i think people really enjoy kind of hearing what goes on in the background it's not this huge kind of you know team behind you it's really just you you get a little bit of help from me and a couple other people and i think that that's awesome and yes sometimes overwhelming and you know you have to ignore the uh bad teeth comments but that's okay they're few and far between do you think i should get braces no because you had them for like five years and they did nothing so at this point dentures is your only hope Know, and you don't need them your teeth are fine gosh should i get all my teeth pulled out and put fake ones in? i'm just joking uh, my teeth are fine all right <laughs> although i'll say i went to the dentist and she was like have you ever thought of getting whitening treatment son i was like well i'm thinking about it now <laughs> yeah, uh i wasn't now i am <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness okay funny story time whose turn is uh, it it's my turn today We've okay been kind of getting confused because well we missed last week for the podcast due to oh, yeah, I was like, painting my house. <laughs> and I think we have to get dad on here for an interview. You're not so sure, but how have my ideas turned out so far? Pretty good. So I think we should line it up. <laughs> but Steph's concerned about the I amount know. of editing it would take. <laughs> well, I just feel like you would start doing some of this weird British voices or something. <laughs> yes, that would probably happen. <laughs> Go on a Monty Python rant. <laughs> Well, oh, come on. Well, all of a sudden, our podcast would likely take a political spin, which is not something either of us want. <laughs> right. Let's hear our dad rant about something. Yeah, gosh. Anyways. All right. Funny story time. <laughs> so I've got two stories. They kind of go together because it happened over two days. So as my friends all know, as you know, I'm petrified of birds. Terrifying. Yeah, right. You can't get away <laughs> from them. I like... You know, if I can run away from something great, I'm not scared of spiders. I'm not scared of really bugs. Like a ladybug, cute. It starts flying, terrifying. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay, I so don't like things that can like come at me from any angle and I can't get away from. <laughs> Anyways, birds go along with that. I've had a few bad experiences. So I'll blame it on that. But the two worst experiences happened when I was living in Vancouver. And 
the one day there was like I know the one <laughs> the one thing that was happening in Vancouver and apparently this was like a bit of an issue for a while is these seagulls and birds or maybe they were hawks I don't know I didn't see it they were like <laughs> coming down Hawks, from the yeah. sky thinking like these women's buns were like hamsters or mice oh, or owls. something squirrels not hamsters squirrels Squirrel. they thought a ponytail was a squirrel yeah. anyways so i'm looking at this thinking like well that sounds like the worst thing but like surely this open only happens like in the woods or on the trail <laughs> no it happened to me on like what? the main street in Mango Run Ramble and I'm walking along <laughs> by myself which like you never want to be by yourself when something traumatic like that happens because then everyone's looking at you like what's going on with this person and you're kind of like trying to explain a bird just swooped down and tried to like eat my ponytail <laughs> and I had to like no tell the story is that what happened yes the bird flew down and like grabbed my ponytail and I was like hitting it above me but like absolutely <laughs> losing my mind <laughs> I didn't know that happened. Oh, and I'm like, of course this happened because I'm already scared. Anyway, so that was awful in itself. Well, how was your head? Did you get scratched? Like scratched? No, because it just grabbed my hair. I think I had like a messy bun. Like other than the fact that I was like fighting this bird off that I couldn't even see. And like, <laughs> that was like the worst of it. Like I didn't get hurt or anything. I think it was like, oh what goodness. is this? This isn't alive. And then like took off. You could really get hurt. I think they could really like claw into your skull. Well, yeah. Well, thank goodness traumatized <laughs> enough from that but the next okay, tell the next yeah one. So the next so day good. our dad comes in town i'm telling him about this like hawk that's like attacked my head and he's like oh he thinks it's so funny haha <laughs> like jill's so scared of birds and all this bird stuff keeps happening to me over the years like it's just like they're out to get me or something yeah, so we're basically. standing um by vancouver by the ferry i don't know where but i just remember we were at a ferry terminal of some kind and I'm like, he's watching me and I'm putting like the last bit of pizza that I was eating into my mouth. So my mouth is like wide open. And as it's like literally in my mouth, like, and I'm just about to close my mouth, this seagull comes from behind my head and like starts, goes in my mouth with its beak and starts grabbing the pizza crust out of my mouth. <laughs> And dad thinks it's the greatest thing he's ever seen in his life. I am losing because I'm like, oh! <laughs> like, could you imagine? <laughs> like, it was like waiting for its moment. Then it's like, no, and she's about to close. And then like goes in. And I was just, oh, it was too much. <laughs> and, like, That's so crazy. Dad was like 30 feet away. And he just, I look over and he's just killing himself laughing you're just french kissing a seagull <laughs> basically i like fed my baby seagull some food out of my mouth yeah, yeah. it's like i'm the seagull was having like mommy issues it was like i want to go back to eating out of my mom's mouth anyway <laughs> Let me just eat so two bird food. stories i have more of them i swear like these birds it's too much and they're terrifying our mom oh, had a budgie man. for a while it was awful no it was a cockatiel whatever Smoky. Terrible. <laughs> Smoky. Smoky. <laughs> oh, Smoky. Anyways, <laughs> that's a good one. That is a good story. I'm glad you told yeah, that one. It was a two-day two traumatic event. <laughs> if you're not traumatized <laughs> enough by getting your ponytail eaten, why not have a bird <laughs> eat out of your mouth <laughs> the next day if that was <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm in tears. Oh, gosh. Oh, good one. I loved it. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up from there. Thank you, Jill, so much. That was a fun topic. I do like talking about YouTube, but I'm always a little bit hesitant because I'm not sure who's interested, but it was kind of fun to share our story a little bit more. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And if you have not yet, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen and be sure to leave us a comment or a question or just some of your feedback. We love to hear from yeah. you. And you can't even see Steph's teeth on the podcast, so it can't be that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no comments about my teeth. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll talk to you Bye. later. Bye-bye.